let's be intentional. <laughs> okay. Mark 8, verse 13. And he left them, and getting into the boat, he departed to the other side. And the disciples had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Who of you have forgotten something sometimes? Uh, who have made some mistakes in your life? Like, oopsie, what? these guys made a mistake. And he, and he charged them, saying, so Jesus is about to speak to them. He says, yeah, take, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned amongst themselves, saying, it's an interesting word, they reasoned. Where does reason happen? It happens in the mental capacity, the mindset, the thinking about things. So they reasoned amongst themselves, saying, it's because we have no bread. <laughs> He's not talking about bread, per se. He's wanting to give them some spiritual truth here. But Jesus, being aware of it, said, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not or do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still harder? Having eyes, do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? Do you not remember? Now, just before we get into what he explains to them is, these guys have been with Jesus all the time. Now they get to the boat. Jesus is traveling. They're going. They're supposed to take the pot course. And they forget the eggs, the fish, the everything. They take one loaf. They were probably in a hurry. Thank goodness there were no, no women on this boat because we would have had, okay, we're not going to go there. <laughs> Jesus would have been late, okay? So, but <laughs> the men didn't worry about anything. He just got it. I'm just joking, women. I'm just joking. But Jesus is getting, they're getting into the boat. They're on their way to the other side. These guys want to get to the other side. They jump in. They're leaving like, And they're fixated on the bread. Jesus is not worried about the loaf. They're looking at the loaf going, Jesus might be hungry, so he might take half. So we've got half left amongst 12 of us. So the 13 of us are going to share one loaf. So like each one is going to get a lick. We're not even going to get. It's going to have communion. Like, break them and break them weer. Like, just break off, brother. Bless the thou. Name of Jesus. I'll say, eat them, puppy. <laughs> so they're looking at this and they're worried that Jesus is going to be upset with them or somebody's going to be upset. Peter might just call fire down on them. You know, he's a very aggressive kind of guy. And these guys are hungry. Timothy might not even believe that they brought... Uh, not Timothy, um, Thomas might not even believe that they brought one loaf. You know, he's doubting Thomas. Uh, Judas might think, ah, oh, I stole the money in any case, so no problem. Uh, I'll buy some bread when I get on the other side. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they, they had many thoughts. But Jesus wants to give them a truth. He wants to talk about the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. There are three, three leavens that are spoken in the Word. It's the leaven of the Pharisees, the leaven of Herod, and the leaven of Christ. What is mixed into my thought, my life, what I'm baking? They're not hearing truth right now because all they can look at is the budget, the problems, the things that are in my way, the giants. They're really impressed by the situation instead of Jesus. So many times I find that people are really impressed by the sickness, the disease, the confrontation, and the giant they're facing, and they're not impressed with Jesus. I'm really impressed with that cross because I know what it did for me. In the face of my enemy, that is much greater. Because he conquered. He made a public spectacle of Satan, enemy. My situation was on the cross the day Jesus died. Jesus went into hell, kicked Satan's butt and all his demons, and said, hey, 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 this is who I am. I'm taking the keys of hell and Hades and death, all of it. So I'm really impressed by that. I'm not impressed by the enemy. But we have moments where we take our eyes off because we forgot to take the bread. Because you made a stupid financial mistake. Because you put yourself in debt. Now you're fixated on that debt. Like, oh, I'm going to beat myself all the time about everything I did until I bleed. And I'm like, Jesus, did you see I paid for it? And he said, why are you paying for it? I paid for it. I paid for your stupidity. Because sometimes you're so stupid. Don't worry, Jesus paid for it. I'm just making a joke, but I'm being very serious. 
Your stupidity got you there. That's why, you know, there are many demons, but they're also the demon of stupidity. That's the one that's manifested most of the time. <laughs> but don't worry, Jesus paid for that one too. <laughs> he conquered all of them. But you are fixated on the one loaf. And then Jesus says, do you have eyes? Hey, I've got eyes. Did, did you have ears? Do you have a memory? Yeah, we have. I said, okay, then use it. You find that. And then he goes into the story. Let's read this. This is so good, man. But Jesus, being aware of it, said um, the reason, verse 19, he said, When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000. Oh, do you remember that story? They got one loaf. Jesus took five loaves, broke it, fed 5,000 people. And then he says, how many baskets of fragments did you take up? They probably were blushing by now. And they said, 12. So each one had a basket left. He also said, I broke the seven for the 4,000. How many baskets of fragments did you take up? Seven. <laughs> you see, Jesus uses less to feed more. So one loaf could probably feed 10,000. You see, the kingdom doesn't operate with reason. It doesn't operate within the natural confines of what it is. It's like five loaves for 5,000, seven loaves for 4,000, one loaf, 10,000. What do you want to do? Like, I don't really care. Like, stop looking at the bread and listen to what I'm trying to teach you. Like, do you not remember? See, the thing is, do you not believe? Galatians 5, we're going to get to that now, but it says, it's for free and the Christ has set us free. We're supposed to be free. Free from anxiety, free from fear, free from anything. Like, I don't care about it. We've got one loaf, we've got ten loaves, we've got no loaves. Jesus will provide. He will take care of me. Let me listen to what he's saying. Because what he's talking about is that very thing. This is the leaven of the Pharisees. The thing that's mixed in where we try and achieve something through our deeds. Where we have to pay for our mistakes. You know, sometimes God won't take you out of your circumstance, but He'll grow you out of it. But you've got to get out. He's not going to leave you there. Every word that was spoken over Christ came true. It might have taken a long time, but it did come true. Then the leaven of Herod. Oh, the world system. How it's supposed to be done. Mixed into the cares and the burdens of what this world is. Looking for the things I don't need but I really want. He'll give you the desires of your heart. But you know what? When your desires come in line with His desires, those desires come true very quickly. Very, very quickly. Because it's His desires. When I have one mind, one heart with Him. But the problem is we have a church that have been in the presence of miracles, that have seen signs and wonders, but yet they still not believe. We forget. I've seen God do many miracles, but before I find myself, I'm back into slavery again because slavery is unbelief. So I'm acting like a slave, though I'm a son, because I just don't believe him. I don't believe he's good. I don't believe he wants the best for me. I don't believe he loves me enough. Yeah, it's like, oh, please, I have to beg. That's the pharisaical Pharisee. Uh, 11 that's been mixed into it, where I have to beg and plead and fast and do. Fasting is not to turn God's heart. It's to get me in line with what His heart is already. It's already for me. He's already in a good mood. He already loves me. I said this on Wednesday night, and it's a, it's a Bill Johnson quote. So if you don't like the quote, phone him. But anyway, it says the following. It says, if you come to a prayer service or you're praying, and you walk out still feeling the same. You didn't pray. You complained. You just complained. When you get into conversation with the alpha, the omega, the beginning, and the end, something's got to shift. I, I, I'm not just speaking to one who's inside of time. I'm speaking to the one who is outside of time, the one who created time, that is there from my past to me, but is manifested right now in the circumstances. So when I'm in conversation with him, I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm not looking at my circumstances or through my circumstances at him. No, I'm looking from him at my circumstances. That's why I'm not impressed with the enemy. I'm not impressed with the giant. 
I'm impressed with him. You see, freedom kicks in the moment you choose to believe. You have a choice, right? See, Adam and Eve had a choice. The tree of life or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What were they faced with, belief or unbelief? It's very quick, very easy. They said, if you want to be like God, eat of that tree, a lie. What did they do? They did not believe what God said. They believed what the enemy said. So where were they in immediately? Slavery. Believing what he says immediately sets you free. When he says, don't worry about the one loaf, and you go, I believe, boom, immediately it changed. Mary, you will birth the Son of God. I believe. Shoo. Pregnant. <laughs> Let it be to me according to the word. Shoo. Instantaneously. Jesus loves you. Give your life to him. Lord, I believe. Shoo. Son of God. Not process of time. Now you've got to come for Christian classes. I'm going to teach you how to talk right, dress right. Thank God we don't have. Now I like a suit, but thank God we don't have to wear a suit every day to talk to Jesus. It's nice for the weddings. It's nice for those other stuff. And we sometimes dress nice, but from the context, I don't have to dress up. Women, you don't have to wear a hat to stand before God. Like, don't I don't. Now you can wear it just because of the sun, <laughs> because of fashion, not because it's a religious requirement. Jesus prayed, he said, Lord, love them the same way you love me. Ooh. What happened at the day Jesus was born? Angels were singing. What happened the day you got born again? Angels were singing. I don't know what kind of, maybe you got those Benedicted angels, those ones that, those, those ones that, they sing those beautiful, my, I got angels like that, I got sister acts, man. I got some angels that are, <laughs> they're pulling up their dresses and they're dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go down that road, otherwise this. This party is going to get started. <laughs> but you're a child of God. Do you believe that? Do you really believe he loves you? Do you really, really, really believe that every word he says is true? Because I believe everything is in this. I made a decision the last month that I'm going to believe everything he says. You say, but Sean, you're a pastor. You're supposed to do that. No, 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 no. Just like the... These disciples, they were in the presence of miracles, yet their heart was hardened because of what? Unbelief. They just didn't believe that really he can take care of them. He fed 5,000. There were more than that probably because of women and children. But he fed 5,000 people with a lunch. You think that's crazy, man. Right now, just go Google miracles. And all the miracles that you've ever heard of, things that you've seen, the dead being raised, blind eyes seeing, lame walking, but you're still looking at the, I almost said it, die vervlakste een brood wat jy in jou boot het, that one loaf of bread, you're still looking at like, oh I forgot, the, ek het die eiers vergeet, and die ham, and die woorstjes, and die, I forgot everything, Lord, I did it all, I messed it up, and she's like, what are you on about, give the loaf your tr- boat full. Pizza, so instantaneous. Jesus took the loaf. He went, show pepperoni pizza, baby. Right there. Like what is that? It's miracle worker. You know, Peter. Peter should have said, hey, guys, shut up. You know how he called me? In the middle of the day, I caught fish on the other side of the boat. Just think about the logic of that. Now, just throw your net in on the other side, Peter. Is there an invisible wall under the boat? Like the fish ain't threw me this side. They just threw me this side. No, there ain't such a thing. And they sweep with all stuff, man. So like logic will go like, oh, you've been crazy, man. I'm not going to do that. It's just, but I believe you. I believe the word. 
Sometimes God will come with a prophetic word to you and he says, do something you've never done before and you reason it out. You reason it out. So it's like, I'm not going to run in church, you know, like, but in your spirit you feel you need to run. And like, no, I don't know if that's... I've heard some amazing testimonies of people just acting in a way that they've never done before and God do some supernatural things. God doing bola makisi in front like, what's the English word for bola makisi? I can't even... Somersaults, like some little roll, rolling on the floor thing in the front of the church, and people get healed because some crazy dude was rolling in front of the church. Why? Because I believe the word. Some of you are looking at your piece of loaf. It might be a situation, a thing. God says, get around the loaf and look at me. Get it out of the way and look at me. Look at the, stop looking at the thing that didn't work and look to me. I'm the one. I'm the alpha. I'm the omega. Get into conversation with me. Be in my presence. Because when you leave that presence, you're walking in the goodness of God. You walk in the Son of God in the earth. Do you believe that? Because he's waiting for a generation to truly believe who we are. That it's our portion. Go with me to Galatians 5 quickly. We're going to read two scriptures. And then I'm done. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to do something like you've never done before. You know, Jonathan and the armor bearer went up to the hill because Jonathan just felt like, listen, let's go kill the enemy. He's one guy. One guy. The old man says, I'll come with. This is going to be a party. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Jonathan says, I don't know. If they say come up, we know victory is ours. If they say come down, I see Jesus waving. <laughs> we're dying today. <laughs> but at least we're trying. It's like those guys, those, those lepers who said, like, if we go to that place, they'll kill us to the city, but if we go to the enemy, we might get something. They go, they've got nothing to lose. They've already lost the arm. You know, they're lepers. <laughs> they go, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> they had nothing to lose. <laughs> But they did something. They moved. This is a move. There's something you've got to do differently. Galatians 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I've got to stand for my freedom. And the freedom is belief. You want to live free, you believe. The moment you choose the opposite, you're free. The moment you choose the opposite of what the enemy is saying, you're free. I'm not listening to the giant shouting, I know God said something. I've signed, sealed, delivered, God said it, it's going to be that way. Some of you have got the, the documents in your spirit. And how do I know that? He says it's engraved into your heart. So you have it. You don't have to be scared of any enemy. You don't have to be scared of the devil. You've got the license in this earth to operate as son of God. Read me quickly John 8. I want to tell you a story. It's set you free. John 8. Verse 36. Let's read you from verse 31. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. To the who? To those who believed him. Are you called a believer? Then it's time to believe. I believe him. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Abide in my word. Something about abiding in the word of God. 
and what he speaks over you and what he says over you and not abiding in the newspaper, Facebook, all your time on Sirius Channel, whatever channel that is, Netflix, YouTube, all the hours of watching other people kill other people. And what are you full of? You're just full of murder. I've got nothing against movies. I've got nothing against stuff. But what are you filling your mind with? It says, abide in my word. We want to see results. So let's get into the word. Let that rub off on us. Because when it comes out of us, I've got nothing against that. But if it's more than what I'm spending in the word, I'm wasting my time. Because it's not my nature. You want to be undone of a child of God? Get into the word. Get into worship. The more anxiety comes, what I do, I'm not running away from I'm running into it because I'm, I've worshipped myself into it. I've worshipped my breakthrough. I've worshipped through what it is. Is it making some sense? Listen, when we continue. He says, and he answered, we are Abraham's descendants um, and never been a bondage to anyone. But you say, you will be made free. Do you know these guys are lying? They said, we are Abraham's descendants. We've never been, we've never been a, a slave. You know, did they forget the whole Egypt story? Like, like where, where? You know those guys who are blind and deaf and difficult? Okay, so they, they just missed that whole part. Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. The word there is unbelief. Whereas, who is ever in unbelief is a slave. The moment you believe, you're free. The moment you believe, you're free. I believe what he says over me. I believe I'm free. I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm set free. I believe I'm blessed. This ain't just a nice little thing to say to each other. Hey, you blessed. I bless you. No, when we believe it, we'll see it. And then he says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be freed, free indeed. He has set me free. Be anxious for nothing. But with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We are free. But somewhere we've got to believe that something's been done. It's not going to be done. It has been done. It's the cross. He paid for all sickness. He paid for all disease on your behalf, for all lack, and he's given you the license. Now you have no more fear of the law, of the devil, of anything around you because you're free. Let me give you an example of a story. <laughs> it's a famous story of me and my dad. I learned how to drive at the age of 12 already. We lived on a plot up in Frienachen. So we had this little, uh, my mom had this little Ford Escort, silver Ford Escort. So me and my sister would sit, I could barely see over the thing. We would be driving, doing handbrake turns up in the gravel road, almost crashed that car a few times. But I knew how to do handbrake turns on the gravel road. I'm spinning, just knew how to drive. So by coming into high school, many times I drove with my dad in the car. I knew how to drive, of course, until one night when all the skills left the building. <laughs> so, yeah, Sean has left the building. I'm standing at nine, we're in Malmesbury, there's only one traffic light in the entire town, so we're leaving Spa, I say, I want to drive, I'll drive home, dad says, yeah, of course, because he knows I can drive. Uh, Rihanna, maybe I need music for the story, I think, yeah, it's, it's a good story. <laughs> so I'm leaving the Spa and we're driving out. <laughs> 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 yeah, baby. I needed maybe that song that night. <laughs> so we're driving out and we get to this traffic light. And um, <laughs> now anything you're going to play now is going to be funny. <laughs> and that night, the provincial police somehow were driving through our town and stopped on the opposite side of the traffic light. So I'm looking at the police. <laughs> I'm looking at the police. <laughs> maybe, maybe a faster song, because this is really not a sad, sad story. <laughs> maybe nothing. I don't know. Okay, let's focus. I felt like that that night. Like I didn't know where to go. So I'm looking at my dad. My dad says, drive straight. I said, I'm going to turn. My dad says, drive straight. I said, I'm going to turn. He says, turn. I said, I'm going to go straight. I'm going to go straight. And when in the presence of law... 
and I didn't have a license, I blanked out completely. And I went American. I drove on the other side of the middleman. Why? Till this day, I don't know. I think the policeman also didn't know what was happening. Because here I come on the other side in Malmesbury, the most fear. And I'm driving, I stand there, my dad looks at me, my dad's face. I will never forget. He was in shock. Like, this didn't happen. Like, how is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> and I realized <laughs> so we got a big fine that night <laughs> a huge fine yeah both of us he fined me and he fined my dad <laughs> he has never done something like this before I could see in his face this cop didn't know if he should laugh or cry but all my driving skills and this is where we can be more serious had left me in a moment and an instant when I got confronted with a place of not having a license in the, in the presence of law or the enemy. You see, so many times we don't realize what we have. So when we're faced with something, we forget everything we've ever learned, we've ever seen, we've ever felt in our life. We forget that God has looked after us so many times. We forget the miracles He's done in our life when we had nothing. We forget He's healed us before. We forget that we've seen the dead raised, the blind seen, because we forget that we have a license that was paid for on a cross to be a son of God. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. So that you can know that you know that you know. I'm not looking at the leaven, this little bread that's lying here. I don't care if there's one, there's five, there's ten. I trust him. I believe him. And those moments when anxiety want to grab you because you've done something stupid or you've done nothing, nothing wrong and you still get persecuted or you still get into trouble or you, you've done everything right you do everything right and then we get to a place where we look at our own thing like I've done everything right and I'm still not getting a breakthrough in my life that's the leaven of the Pharisee because it's looking at you so if we find ourselves there many times especially in ministry you're like you suffer through things you're like but Lord I do everything right I preach to people I tell people about your goodness and then I don't even have money. And then the Holy Spirit is like, excuse me? <laughs> Do you not remember what I've done for you? Do you not know that I love you and that you'll always have more than enough? You know, Judas was stealing out of Jesus' purse and nobody even realized he was stealing. Do you know how much Jesus had? One thing I'm just going to get out of your mind, Jesus was never poor. That scripture where he became poor so that we can become rich was on the cross. Because he took poverty to give you wealth. He took shame to give you boldness and victory. He set you free. At his birth, there were gifts so that he could go to Egypt. Provision. His father was a businessman. Did very well. He was in the line of David. Jesus' clothes were so wealthy, they fought over it. So expensive. Blessed. And then he says, Lord, the way you have loved me, love them. You are loved. Would you stand with me, please? God's done so much already during this day from right through the worship to in the very presence of now. But where are you standing? I'd like you just to close your eyes with me for a moment. Some of you 
are really at that place of a hardened heart because of the leaven of Herod or the leaven of the Pharisees because you, you're looking at that piece of bread and all you see is one loaf and you've forgotten. Today I want to bring, let the Holy Spirit bring to remembrance the good things. The good things of the Father. Holy Spirit, right now, I pray you minister to everyone in this place. All fear and anxiety will leave right now. I declare today, sons of God rising up with no anxiety, no fear, freedom, freedom, believers, believers, that we will boldness declare, I'm a believer, I believe, I believe the word, I believe the prophetic, I believe God's call upon my life, I believe this nation will only see good things, I believe I am, the, I am above and not beneath, I am the head and not the tail. I believe every word God has said over my family. I believe every word God has said over my city. I believe every word God has said over this nation. I believe. Come on, just drink in the presence. Can you feel it? There's such an anointing here. I believe. I believe you love me. I believe you love me, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. I pray for every person here today, those who are watching, those who are here. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will take this word and just magnify it in people's hearts. Let it find root in love and let it bear fruit. Thank you for it, Jesus. Thank you for it, Jesus. So beautiful, Jesus. Take a few more minutes. The Holy Spirit is ministering to people. Father, I pray as we leave today, that we'll leave with this presence, that will fill our life, will fill our work, fill our homes, fill our families. Reveal more of the Father to us, Holy Spirit, than ever before. And we truly see a generation that believes signs, wonders, miracles, but above all, believe that we're loved. Jesus' name.
Amen. Why don't someone give somebody a hug next to you? Those who have been watching with us, thank you for watching today. Bless you. Tune in next Sunday. We'll continue. Pastor Marco from Peru is going to be with us. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bless you. Bye-bye.